Hi, and welcome to the 2019 Paper 1 uh, Question 8 of the Leaving Start Order Level. As usual, if you want the set of notes I'm working off here, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com, and that email address should be in the description below. So, we're on Question 8 here. We're having a stop and just having a go um, and catching back in if you're having a problem. This part A is fairly easy, it's worth 5 marks, but they're, you're told here the power P of an engine is measured in horsepower using the formula here. So that's your most important thing. And you see here the P must stand for power, obviously. R stands for, you see here, the engine speed measured in RPM. And then the T is the torque measured in whatever units torque is measured in. So we don't need to worry too much about what this is actually doing. It's just some scenario. And the, the scenario will change. What's important is this function has three unknowns. If we want to be able to solve this, we need to know two of the three things, and then we can get our calculator to do the job. And in a sense, questions like this can be fairly handy. So part one here says, find the power, so find this variable, of an engine that generates 480 units of torque, so that's your T, at 2500 RPM, so that's your R. So you're given these two numbers, so it's just a matter of, when I, in the workings here, I've been very pedantic. I've shown all three unknowns and I've written in the two pieces of information I have, written out the formula, substituted in the information I have, put it to the calculator, and then I was asked to round it to the nearest whole number. So 228.4 rounds up to, actually, that's actually technically the wrong answer. Let me just check that and come back. Back, I just realized that my rounding was wrong. For some reason, I rounded 228.48. I rounded it up, that up to 229. So, obviously, if you're rounding the 8 here, doesn't matter. It's the digit prior to what you're being asked to round to is what matters. So, 4 is less than 5, so the next number stays what it is. If this had been, um, for example, if that had been the 8, it would have rounded up to 229. In some scenarios, it might not make sense to round down because part of something is a full thing. That wouldn't be a situation like that. Now, either way, if I'd done the wrong rounding, I would have lost only one, still would have lost one mark. Um, but in the scheme of things, it's not the, the end of the world. Don't actually need the units here, but we should put in just the, the, the word units just to cover ourselves. Okay. Now, part two here is worth 10 marks. It's a lot of marks, okay? So we were asked to rearrange the formula to write R in terms of P and T. Now, the algebra in pass level is, you know, can be challenging, but also this, it can be methodical. So there's usually no major tricks. And if you can do the moving stuff around the formula, or transposition, then, you know, you can get through a lot of the formulas that to, to do well in pass level. Anyway, the formula's here. This is the one we're given the question. So you're looking to rearrange. This should stay where it is. And everything else, okay, the T and the 525, 5252, should move to the other side. Okay. So how you do that is the trick. Okay. So I'm just going to take away that fluff there. So the first I'm going to move is this 5252. Okay. Always as a kind of a rule, I will try to make things linear, as in remove fractions if possible. It's a good, it's not always the case but mostly so if i bring the 5252 across the equal it was dividing on the right to become multiplied on the left okay so I'm, I'm i'm on the way i want to move the t okay so the t is being multiplied on the right when i move it across the equal it becomes the opposite so it becomes divided and it divides into everything on the far side i have it now everything in terms of uh or sorry or in terms of p and t Okay, so there's nothing much more I can do. Again, that's fairly handy marks, okay, as long as you don't underthink it and think it's harder and start doing crazy things. So that's part two. Now part uh, B here says, a company was set up in January 2016 to repair engines. In the first month of its existence, the company made a loss of 4,000 euro. This loss reduced by 250 a month for each month that the company traded. So they're making less of a loss every month. Okay, so they're increasing their profit. So starting off at minus 4,000, 
here on the table. Um, so one, two, one, two, three, and then profit is so this negative profit, the loss, negative three seven fifties. Okay. Now you can see the jump there. Okay, those numbers are connected. Actually, they tell us so it's going down by two hundred fifty a month. So the next number there is minus three seven five zero. Now it's, in a sense, the loss has gone down by two fifty. So that's that would be uh, three thousand five hundred. And 250 more, 250 more, and 250 more. So basically, the difference is, okay, the, I'm showing, I'm showing one of the calculations, um, minus 2750, okay, minus the negative 3000, okay, it's showing the difference between those two things, okay, and just want to show, maybe show if I need it, if I'm, if I'm even, even necessary to show that a little bit there. If the table filled in, you'll have gotten the, the five marks that are available. Now, part two says, show that the profit of the company or the company makes in month N is given by the formula T of N equals 250 times N minus 4,250. So that should be a hint, okay, that it's the section on sequences in the series. I should have my math tables still open. Hence, and I'm looking here at okay. you're just flicking through your mass tables or any, any familiarity, that's the formula they're talking about. Okay. So that's the formula I'm here I got. Okay. Uh, taking the formula written into my page. I'm identifying the, the the three things that I need to get this formula. So A is the first term, so it's the minus four thousand. N is the number of months, okay, and that can stay general because I have this well, that that changes, and the D is the difference, so it's two fifty each time, okay. So I fill in the the different parts, and then to simplify by multiplying the two fifty by both of these terms in the bracket. And then the last thing I did is just add the two numbers and I end up with this, this expression. That's the expression they asked me to find. So that's the, the job done. Now part three here says, what profit does the company make in January 2018? So in month 25, they give me that, that hint. So I have just previously found an expression okay, to show the, the, the profit in every month if that model holds it's a, it's a linear relationship uh, i'm also told that it's 25 i'm concerned with so if i put 25 in instead of the n okay there was two unknowns i was told one of them now there's one unknown put that through the calculator or work it out and i end up with the answer of uh 2000 in that 25th month it's fairly handy it's been so we've got nice questions so far now part four says, find the month in which the company breaks even. If we went back, okay, in the statement here, we had two unknowns. They told us this unknown. In part four, they're telling us this unknown, and we have to find the, the other one. So in anything, you have to be only one unknown for it to be able to be solved. If they didn't tell us any information here before we were given anything, there was two unknowns, couldn't go any further. So once we're told one of the pieces, we can do algebra to find the other, okay? So we're given our statement, okay, it's it there. I'm told that the, what month is the profit zero, okay, T of N is the profit. So if you make this leap, T of N is equal to T of N, they're the same. So therefore zero can be put equal to this. I've done that here. And she realize that's a statement of one unknown, just solve it, bring them, negative 4250 across the equal changes to the other sign changes positive bring the 250 across it was multiplied now it's divided do the calculator or whatever and i got 17. so the 17th month now part five here okay so they're all these are all connected one after another it says find s of n the general term for the total profit of the company after n months now that sounds very very difficult but in a sense, you don't really need to know what all this means. You just have to realize that, wait, I've been using a formula from the math tables. 
Let's go and see if they're a useful formula for me. The question says S of N. And you suddenly have this thing in the in the formula book going S of N. So look, go with it. Um, now in, in some times we have two different types of sequences. The basic difference is an arithmetic sequence is linear. It goes up by a constant amount. A geometric sequence goes up by a ratio. So two things, you know, one and a half, one of It's more of the, 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 the arithmetic is what I would be expecting more often. So taking that formula, um, now I have it written out here. Plug these numbers into your formula. Okay. Now the thing I'm plugging is the A, so that's here. Unknown here on the right hand side. I can just simplify it and see where it ends up. So multiplying two by minus four thousand gives me this. Two fifty by n is two fifty n. Two fifty by negative one is negative two fifty. Let's simplify that by adding those two things together. Okay, minus eight thousand and minus two fifty is minus eight thousand and fifty. Then I'm just multiplying the n by both of these terms. You multiply in a fraction by a term, you multiply by the top only, okay? And for simplicity here, I've divided both of them by the two as, as it went along. So half of 8,250 is 4,125, half of 250 is 125. That's my expression, okay? Don't need to go any further. Can't add those terms, they're, they're not the same type. Now part six here says, hence otherwise find the total profit of the company at the end of January 2019, at the end of month 37. So I have my formula. I've been told one of the two of the two uh, unknowns, so 37. So straightforward is like part um, four. Put my actually part three, sorry. Put my n in instead of there. Put it to the calculator. Okay, and I end up with 18,500. That's it. Okay, I think it should be the end of question eight. Okay, so it's a fairly long question, so apologies for the length. And like all these things, just so we put to remember, if for example you couldn't do, let's even say part one back here. Okay. Um, but you know you need it in the next part, okay, for whatever reason. Make up an answer. Okay, it might not be accepted as correct in this part, but it would be accepted as correct in all future parts. So it, it's always worth keeping that in mind. Sometimes you can get stuck in a part and just give up and lose all the parts after. And you lose a huge chunk of marks. And that's not necessary if you remember that little trick. Anyway, thanks very much and see you on question nine.